Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us on your public service broadcaster ZNBC TV One. It is the first series of Inside Health, a TV program that focuses on the promotion of sexual reproductive health and rights. Coming to you live, obviously, on your public service broadcaster, ZNBC TV One. This is a program that has been powered by the Zambia Association of Gynecologists and Obstetricians, ZAGO. Today's program will briefly discuss ZAGO as an organization, its establishment, its mandate in saving society. And we'll also look at one of the most important health campaigns the organization has been carrying out since 2019. The Zambia Prevention of Unsafe Abortions further will also uh, extensively tackle the legal framework of termination of pregnancy. You can watch us live, obviously, on DSTV channel 275 and also uh, Top Star. We are coming to you live from our ZNBC studios. I am your host, Venzu Mleamola. To help us explore this topic in studio, my able guests are Zago Legal Advisor, Mr. Muzi Kamanga, and uh, we also have uh, Dr. Jean Chira, who is uh, a gynecologist. Thank you so much for coming through to this program and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, uh, Vinza. Okay, so later on the program, we'll be able to open our phone lines on the numbers that will be showing on your screen. Be sure to call us for any questions that you have. Our experts are here to help us look into those. So to kickstart our program, let me start with you, Mr. Kamanga. Just uh, under a minute, uh, tell us more about yourself and where you're coming from. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vinza. And good afternoon to your viewers wherever they are in this country. Uh, my name is, as you said, uh, Muzi Kamanga. Um, I am a Zambian and uh, a lawyer by training, and I've worked in the non-state actor sector for a couple of years, focusing specifically on human rights. Mm -hmm. um, I currently work for an organization called uh, WILDAF, but for, the, for this uh, program, I'm sitting in as uh, the legal advisor for Zago, the sponsors of uh, the health uh, talk. Okay, thank you so much for that brief introduction. Let me ask you to follow suit, Dr. Chira there. Okay, thanks a lot, Benzu. Uh, my name is Dr. Jean Chira. I am found at uh, Women and Newborn Hospital, UTH. I am a registrar there in uh, obstetrics and gynecology. Okay, um, let's start by looking at what Zago is and uh, what you've been doing. Uh, just give us a, big, a brief background. Okay. Um, so Zago is um, a non-profit voluntary member uh, association for the medical uh, personnel who are specialized in the field of obstetrics and uh, gynecology. So uh, this organization, or rather association, was formed in 2005, but officially registered in uh, 2006. The mandate of Zago is basically to ensure that women and adolescents have um, access unlimited access to their sexual health and reproductive rights. Okay, let's talk about who makes Zago. Um, like I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. on, Zago is, um, is, is made up of uh, professionals who are in obstetrics and gynecology, but we have uh, other members such as the midwives, and uh, we, have, we actually have a lot of categories of, uh, of people. The midwives, the pediatricians, Basically, anyone who's willing to work with us um, with regards to sexual reproductive health and also reduction of uh, maternal mortality and morbidity, especially, yeah. Okay, we are also aware that Zago is currently running a project dubbed uh, the Zambia Prevention of Unsafe Abortions Project. Can you shed more light on this project and what it aims to achieve? Okay, thank you so much, Renzu. So this project was, um, it, it's uh, basically a follow-up on, um, on a project that was run by Kit, by Kit Royal University. So what happened is that um, the, the, this university actually had uh, an, a needs assessment that was done. And what was found was that there are so many maternal mortalities and morbidities that are arising from unsafe abortions 
So hence, um, the campaign that Zago is running called the Prevention of Unsafe Abortions, or um, dubbed Safe Choices. So I'm sure your next question then would be what 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 are safe choices, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. So um, safe choices are basically the different choices that a woman can make with regards to her reproductive health. So a woman has has the right to decide what she wants to be done to herself. If a woman decides she has a pregnancy and doesn't want to carry on with that pregnancy within the limits or the confines of the law, as counsel would put it, this woman has the right to terminate it. So basically, the Surf Choices campaign is not advocating for uh, termination of pregnancies, no. Mm -hmm. It's not advocating for women to have abortions, no. What this um, campaign is advocating for is for women and adolescents to know what their sexual reproductive health rights are. And, okay. they are, um, and also for them to be able to easily access these services uh, within the health sector. Okay, let me bring you in, Mr. Kamanga. Just um, explain to us on the, um, in the viewers at large on, on what the law says on termination of pregnancy or in, sim in simple terms, what the law says on abortion in Zambia. Thank you very much, uh, Venzo. So like every other endeavor of human life, the Zambian legal framework does have a position on matters related to what we call termination of pregnancy, mm -hmm. but commonly referred to as abortion. So we do have uh, a law relating to abortion, and our legal framework on abortion is defined by a number of uh, acts of parliament or statutes, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is, uh, of course, uh, the grand norm of uh, the land, the constitution. Uh, the constitution, in particular, Article 12 sub uh, Article 2, does provide or does have a say on abortion. And uh, I think in summation, it does uh, legalize the provision of abortion subject to certain conditions that it has authorized a subsidiary act of uh, parliament to spell out uh, those uh, conditions. And one such uh, subsidiary act of parliament that uh, the constitution refers to in Article 12 sub Article 2 is the Termination of Pregnancy Act. Another, the, the Termination of Pregnancy Act uh, details the conditions under which you can terminate a uh, pregnancy, as well as uh, where such will be legal, as well as who is qualified in Zambia to do so. Then we have the Penal Code. The Penal Code has a say on uh, termination of pregnancy and provides, for obvious reasons, the sanctions around anybody who doesn't adhere to it. Then we have uh, the Gender Equity and Equality Act that was uh, recently passed, I think, in 2015. It also, it forms part of uh, the legislative framework for abortion. Then the other act is um, <clears throat> through the Gender Equity and Equality Act, we have two international instruments that we domesticated in Zambia. That is uh, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, popularly known as uh, the CEDO, that has, dom has been domesticated and uh, for all intents and purposes would operate as a local act. Then we have also the protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, on the rights of women in Africa, commonly referred to by many human rights activists as the Maputo Protocol. That one also does provide on abortion. In summation, oh, sorry, and uh, also the Health Professions Act. So in summation, we'd say that uh, the Zambian uh, legislative framework on abortion is made up of seven acts of parliament that tries to provide for this uh, subject matter of discussion. And each of those acts has a specific uh, objective insofar as the abortion law is concerned. Any background to this law? To the extent that uh, the fourth mothers and fathers of this entity we call Zambia did come up together in uh, 1963, before this country came into being, and structured what would be the guiding law of the country, which is the constitution. And in the Bill of Rights, that has remained unchanged mm -hmm. from uh, Zambia's independence up to date as we speak. They did provide through there that there will be a law relating to abortion. And abortion should be looked at from two angles. One is that it is a human element. Second line, perhaps more important, is that abortion is a human rights issue. So in Zambia's Charter for Human Rights, which is our Bill of Rights, abortion is talked uh, about. And you'd want to think the background would be that uh, it is so because it is part of the human rights uh, prescriptions for any person in Zambia, particularly for women.
Okay, before we talk about uh, circum circumstances under which one can um, uh, terminate a pregnancy, let me bring you in, Dr. Chira. Uh, talk to us on the stakeholders of this uh, awareness and what messages you take to them. Um, so we are working with a number of stakeholders. We have international um, organizations that we are working with. We are working with uh, the, uh, the Federation of uh, Obstetricians and Gynecologists called uh, FIGO, uh, which is currently our main sponsor for this, uh, for this campaign that we are carrying out. Then we've also worked with uh, World Health uh, Organization. We are working with, um, um, we are also working with the World Bank, okay? Then locally we are working with different, uh, different stakeholders. We have uh, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of uh, General Education, we are also working with the traditional leaders, the uh, different uh, media houses, and then we are also working with the youths. So our stakeholders in this are quite, quite many. And the message that uh, basically we've been giving out to the, to the stakeholders is this issue of abortions, whether we like it or not, is going to continue occurring. And as Zago, one, one of our main aims is reduction in maternal mortalities and morbidities that are caused by these unsafe abortions. And if I take you back to, to the Zambia Demographic Health Survey in 2007, you can imagine our mortality rate was at 30% because of unsafe abortions. So um, with the sensitizations that we've had with the different stakeholders, we've seen our numbers now reducing to about 7% within the um, latest demographic health survey, which is like a really big improvement on our part. N not to say that we're clapping for ourselves or patting ourselves on the back because of there's still a lot of women and uh, ladies or girls out there who are still conducting these unsafe abortions. So our message is still for us to continue working together. Yeah. Okay, Council, uh, let's talk about under which circumstances should one terminate um, a pregnancy? What should be considered? Uh, so pursuant to Article 12, sub Article 12 of the Constitution, the termination of pregnancy act has spelled out the circumstances under which, you know, abortion will be legal within the spirit and letter of the law. Uh, under Section 3, Subsection 1 of uh, the same Act, it provides uh, about four conditions or circumstances under which abortion will be mm -hmm. within the spirit and letter of the law. The first is that uh, whenever there's a risk to the life of the pregnant woman, it is within the spirit and letter of the law to recommend termination of pregnancy. Uh, the operating word is to recommend, not that the doctors will decide, but they will recommend, and the decision whether to carry forth the, pregnant, the termination or not will always be a woman's. So your viewers would want to ask uh, what would constitute a risk to the life of the pregnant woman. There are many varied uh, reasons or factors that would give life to that provision. Probably uh, the good doctor here will be best placed to cite a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. But for a lay person like me, and probably the majority of your viewers, one of those factors will be relating to age. Um, the younger a woman is, or should I say the older woman is, especially those who are not within the age range of probably 18 to maybe 45 or thereabout, have a very higher risk of uh, life to the, of death to their life should uh, they try to get pregnant. Uh, recently, I think social media was awash with uh, some pictures of uh, about a 10 year old uh, girl in Zambia, I don't know if you were privy to that, who yes, was heavily yes. pregnant. Yes. Uh, as a non-medical person, one of the obvious things that come to your mind is to feel for the safety of that child insofar as carrying the whole pregnancy to full term is concerned, the whole process of child labor, including the rearing. And that does constitute a threat to her life. And uh, if such is the case, you can recommend uh, termination of her pregnancy. And there will be many other reasons around uh, that condition, probably if uh, a woman discovers that uh, after being pregnant for three months, uh, the doctors uh, advise that probably there's uh, a devastating uh, disease such as cancer developing in her body. Probably the doctors will feel that her body is not good enough to accommodate both the developing cancer and the pregnancy. And you can consider terminating of uh, pregnancy within that uh, circumstances, and that would fit uh, the risk to the life of the pregnant woman. The second one, and this is not in order of preference, but just in, in our way of discussion. The second one is that uh, whenever there's a risk 
to the physical or mental health of the pregnant woman, it is within the spirit and letter of the law to recommend termination of pregnancy. What would be the risk to the physical well-being of a woman? Any disease like uh, the example I just gave out probably would constitute a risk to the physical well-being of the pregnant woman. What would constitute the risk to the mental well-being of the pregnant woman? Um, Zambia is a nation of uh, people with different, you know, biological makeups and wants and desires. And uh, we are not devoured of uh, people with criminal minds. Uh, some of our women in this country have fallen victims to rape. And uh, through those uh, unfortunate uh, criminal activities, they've also become pregnant. And if a woman has serious reservations about carrying forth such a pregnancy, owing to the circumstances under which she got pregnant, she will be within her right under the Zambian law to go for a termination of pregnancy. And that would constitute uh, mental health because at that point, you would not guarantee that her mental well-being will be safe owing to the pregnancy. The third uh, circumstance uh, that you can cite under the Termination of Pregnancy uh, Act is that uh, whenever there is a risk to the physical or mental health of the other existing children of the pregnant woman, it is within the spirit and letter of the law to recommend uh, termination of pregnancy. You have to distinguish between the physical and mental health of the pregnant woman herself to the current, to the one I've just cited, which is that whenever there's a risk to the physical and mental health of the other existing children of the pregnant woman. Mm -hmm. So the focus under this uh, circumstance is not on the woman herself, but her other children, that if there's a risk to the physical uh, well-being of her other children, she might uh, consider termination of uh, pregnancy. For simplification for your viewers, uh, I stand to be corrected by her, but it is biologically possible for a woman who gave birth two months ago, for reasons, to get pregnant again. Mm -hmm. The demands of lactation and looking after the baby might possibly not compete favorably with her condition of uh, being pregnant, and that would constitute a threat to the physical well-being of uh, her child who is two months old. It will be within the spirit and light of the Lord to recommend uh, termination of pregnancy. And the mental health would actually uh, deal with that. I don't know if you have enough time for me to explain maybe an example around that one. Okay, for the sake of our viewers. For, for the sake of uh, your, your, so, your viewers, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. So we have had uh, circumstances under which women have fallen victims to probably blood relations. And the, within the blood, within the family setup, uh, let's say woman A has two children and uh, she was once married to this man who is deceased. And she happens to fail pregnant with a brother to the deceased uh, husband. And because of the family bonds between maybe that brother's family and uh, the pregnant woman's uh, family, she would not want maybe to disturb those. And she would think that uh, the pregnancy will be maybe a mark of betrayal to her own children and would cause uh, mental anguish. Uh, another example you can give is a, a South African uh, example, a bit extreme, where a 20-year-old boy had impregnated both a mother who was 40 and her daughter who was uh, 19. And if the pregnancy would uh, disturb uh, maybe the mental state of her daughter in those circumstances, mm -hmm. under the Zambian law, it would be within the spirit and letter of the law to recommend termination of her pregnancy. And the fourth and final one is that whenever there's a risk that the unborn child would suffer from any serious uh, physical or mental abnormalities, it will be within the spirit and letter of the law to recommend uh, termination of a pregnancy. Of course, we're not saying here that uh, for our brothers and sisters, or should I say for my age, for our children who are born with such uh, unfortunate uh, physical or mental abnormalities, they have no right to life, no. But because of the advances in science that our colleagues have done, uh, they are able to tell when a woman is pregnant that the child might possibly not have uh, the best of physical or mental health owing to whatever factors that the doctors have advised. At the time when the woman is pregnant, she does reserve the right to go for abortion or not. And ultimately, for all these four factors that I've mentioned, the risk to the physical, sorry, the risk to the life of the pregnant woman, the risk to the physical or mental health of the pregnant woman, the risk to the physical or mental health of the other existing children of the family or wherever there's a possibility that the unborn child would suffer from any serious physical or mental abnormalities. Okay. You need to take account of the actual or reasonable foreseeable environment of a pregnant woman. Which factors would you need to look at? You need to look at factors such as 
a woman's mental well-being, her medical history, her age, her social background, her economic power, her religious beliefs, and all those factors. Those will guide the medical experts in determining whether any of the conditions that uh, I mentioned uh, earlier would fall or would suit the circumstances of a woman in a uh, uh, subject matter. Okay, you're watching Inside Health and our lines are open. You can call us on 25 30 25 for your questions or contributions. Our experts are here to make sure that uh, all your questions with regards to um, safe termination of pregnancy are attended to. Now, let me bring you in, Doc. We've heard the side, the legal side of the story. Let's look at the medical side. At what point do you encourage uh, termination of a pregnancy? Um, thank you, Renzu, for that question. And I want to dispel the word encourage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I always make a, a disclaimer, and I'm going to make it now. Our discussion here is not centered on us encouraging women to have abortions. Yes, yes. Our discussion is centered on women understanding and enjoying their sexual reproductive health rights to the full extent yes. of the law. Okay? So um, I think council has quite stipulated what those conditions of pregnancy are. Just over. hold your thought, Doc. Let's accommodate our caller. Hello, you are through to Inside Health. Good afternoon, Pana. Afternoon, thank you. Please go ahead with your question or contribution. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, Pana. Afternoon, we can hear you. Just ensure that the volume on your TV set is completely off. Okay. I'm yes, calling please. from Chongwe. My name is Lupez uh, Alsa. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, very interesting topic. But um, let me say this. C can you put in Venetia and hear the impact of what you are saying there? Come again? Yes. Um, this issue of abortion. With the age we are living in, our children, they are falling. We can get you, please, just continue with your thought. Uh-huh. But this topic has changed it. It's so open. Yes, it's so open. I think the best way, we are aware that the abortion is there. We can learn. When there is a person, not as a right to anyone can. Because our truth as a parent are important to this person. Think of it that I'm a house or some books of a No. Okay. Thank you so much for that question contribution. Uh, Council, I will allow you to respond to that and uh, maybe as you attend to him. Let's also look at. Um, when the termination of pregnancy or abortion is deemed um, unlawful. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not too sure if I got uh, your caller's uh, names, as well as uh, maybe his question. I think there was a bit of a break. But if I did get his question, it was that uh, we should not advocate for children to get abortions as and when they want it. I don't know if uh, that is a fair summation of uh, his contribution. If that, that is the case, then I would respond to say that um, just like uh, Doc did uh, mention earlier, we're not here to advocate for any woman to get an abortion. Far from it. Abortion is a human rights issue. And abortion is the reality of the lives we live in. Uh, but I do also appreciate the fact that uh, in anywhere in the world, abortion is a very emotive uh, subject of discussion be it in the U.S. Actually, in the U.S., it constitutes one of the most controversial subjects for presidential elections. Mm -hmm. You just need to look at uh, whoever is a Republican president. You have a different uh, position on matters related to SRA, HRA, is it Section Reproductive uh, Health Rights, particularly abortion, to whoever is a president from a democratic side of uh, things. And that is how America has been. So even for a country that is by and large conservative, such as Zambia, uh, differences of opinion around that, I think, uh, 
should be encouraged because that is, uh, I think, the best way of uh, moving this country forward. That stated, from the point of view where I'm coming from as a lawyer, especially a human rights one, mm -hmm. all we're trying to do is to make sure that for those women who might find themselves in circumstances that would uh, be suggestive of them not in a condition to carry to full term the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. The law in Zambia does give allowance for consideration of terminating of pregnancy. But the law on termination of pregnancy in Zambia is very different from many other jurisdictions. Uh, I take for that South Africa. Uh, in Zambia, termination of pregnancy is done on certain conditions mm -hmm. that the law has stipulated. And uh, as long as you stick to those conditions, you'll be within the spirit and light of the law. It is not done on what the South African law provides as a free choice, that you just go to a, to a health facility and say you want to abort, and there is no explanation to be given. In Zambia, if you do not meet what the law provides as the conditions, as stated by the Constitution in Article 12, sub Article 2, giving the power to the termination of pregnancy, it is highly unlikely that uh, you will be uh, you know, allowed to terminate a pregnancy legally. Um, your, your question was, uh, to what extent... Just, uh, before we talk of right. uh, to what extent it becomes unlawful, and uh, Doc, I know you might want to say something, but let's accommodate Pastor Joshua calling us from Mungwa. Hello, you're through to Inside Health. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I could... Hello, please... Uh, Pastor, just ensure that the volume on your TV set is completely low so that we can hear you clearly. Okay. Yes, please. Please go ahead. Yeah, my, co yeah, my contribution is that um, uh, we have heard uh, how uh, th these things can be done, but uh, according to the Bible, if you go to the laws, uh, Exodus 20, verse 13, it says, do not commit murder. But how... Are we going to promote this? Uh, meanwhile, the Bible is saying that we are not su supposed to commit murder. So let us uh, maybe try to tell them to say we have to uh, minimize and to find ways, means and ways to protect those people or to protect ourselves from such uh, things because otherwise God will punish the whole country because of the same laws. Yes, we can follow to say this law, this law in, in Zambia or whatever, but the main point is that what God instructed us to do, because God wants us to, to be the way those uh, terminated pregnancy was supposed to be as well. Maybe you can terminate a pregnancy, a person was supposed to be a president or a pastor to help other people. Then he, someone go to the hospital and explain to say, me, I don't have support. Me, I was, uh, I, it was happening like this and like this. Then he, the doctor agree and did, did do that. Then later go to punish the doctor and together with the law, the maker, the law maker of that law. So I think let us make, make, it, make it clear to encourage people not to abort, but even not to have uh, unnecessary pregnancy. Let them find means and ways to minimize so that we can keep also the law of God. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor. Doc? Um, Pastor Joshua, thank you so much for that contribution. I think like I mentioned earlier on, our discussion here is not centered on, on us advocating for women to have pregnancies terminated. I think um, le just a, a brief background also on um, safe choices. Now, when we're talking about safe choices, we're not just talking about women walking into a health facility and asking for an abortion service. We are talking about a woman walking into a health facility and also being able to ask for options that could help prevent her from this unwanted or unintended pregnancy that can occur. So we are talking about, we are basically here to advocate for women to know that they have these rights so that we prevent the number of deaths and the number of um, uh, morbidities that are occurring from these unsafe abortions. Pastor Joshua, whether we like it or not, yes, we understand we're a Christian na nation, 
and we respect that fact. But when we're looking at the number of women coming in with abortions that are conducted by themselves, it's so sad when you see an 18-year-old girl insert a cassava stick to terminate a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens, Benzu? Wow. This girl will come to the hospital, mm -hmm. and she'll be so sick, she'll be so septic, she would have had infection going all over her body. Do you know what ends up happening? We end up removing the uterus of that girl, which is like, yes, it's slightly less than the woman dying. But imagine you have a number of those girls coming in every now and then. And it's not just girls. It's pregnant. It's uh, married women as well. You will find a married woman like the scenario council had given to say she just delivered and within two months she has a pregnancy and she can't cope with the stress of the pregnancy, the stress of the other children around the house, the stress of being a wife, you know. So and this woman just comes and has an if she decides to have that abortion on her, on her own and it ends up going wrong she'll end up leaving children without a mother. She'll end up leaving this baby without a mother. People do get sick. People end up with a lot of complications. And so we are saying to avoid those complications, let women understand the rights that they have to say they have access to these safe abortion services as long as they are provided within the confines of the law. And that these women have safe they can make safe choices, not just abortions, but we are talking about contraceptive care, we're talking about family planning, we're talking about prevention or maybe uh, discussion <coughs> centered on, uh, on abstinence. So Venzu, yes, once again, we're not here to promote Azago. Mm -hmm. Our goal is that every woman in every uh, part of Zambia is aware of their sexual reproductive health rights. Yes, and prevention of maternal mortality and morbidity arising from unsafe abortions. Okay, Doc, thank you for that feedback. But later, I want, I'll want i be getting back to you just to get what is really happening on the ground in terms of uh, unsafe uh, abortions. You've already touched a bit on how many cases you, you receive like in terms of women coming to the hospitals when it is too late. So later we'll be getting to that. But for now, let's accommodate our caller. Is it Chivunda who is on the line? Hello, you're through to Inside Health. Yes, good afternoon, madam. Afternoon, thank you. Please go ahead with your question or contribution. Yes, uh, to start with, I don't support abortion. That's uh, uh, that's to start with. And then I will, I'm a bit concerned of uh, this organization, uh, the people you are talking to. I just want to know at what rate are they now since they established? We want to know the percentage of the abortion they are now since they established this organization. Because they, like now there is a conflict between uh, us Christians and the lawmakers as they are there. Can they educate us or tell us at what they are? Different thing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Doc or Council, when you look over statistics, we record, we hear of stories where young girls in the communities are boating almost on a daily basis. What is the scenario on the ground when you talk of these cases of abortion? Um, thank you, Venzu. So when we're talking about um, the incidence, rather, or the prevalence of, uh, of abortions, it's so difficult for us to give the actual numbers or statistics on the ground. And the reason is simple. We are not able to capture everyone that is procuring this service. Okay, um, about last year, Zago conducted a research in about six different main hospitals. Um, UTH, the hospitals on the Copper Belt, and um, I think Kabwe. And you know, you would be shocked to find that the numbers that are registered as are way less than the numbers that are actually prevailing on the ground. And the reason is simple. That is why it's because people do not come in. They, they do not come in when they need the service. They're coming in when they're already having complications. Okay. And then also what we have noticed and that's why we're engaging other stakeholders to say, if we are able to involve the church leaders, if we're able to involve the uh, community health uh, leaders and the traditional leaders, these people are able to help us to disseminate this information to their communities. And um, I think that's the, that's the more reason why I think in the beginning I stated that we have seen a number, a reduction in the number of women coming in with unsafe abortions. 
okay? The number has reduced, but our aim as Zago, like I mentioned earlier on, it's not abortions. We are an association that is comprised of specialists in the medical field of obstetrics and gynecology. And to, just to break that down a bit, Obstetrics and, gy and gynecology is basically a field of medicine that deals with the health matters of women. Okay, so anything to do with a woman's health, like regulating a woman's, uh, not really regulating, but anything to do with a woman's health, if it comes to her pregnancy, her wanting to get pregnant, um, issues of uh, abortions, issues of fibroids. You know, like when I think the misconception that people are having is that they're thinking that Zago is an association that is basically just talking about, no, it's an, uh, talking about abortions. It's an association that's regulating the practice of professionals in the medical field of obstetrics and gynecology. And because of that, and um, also, because we've seen that there are a lot of mortalities that are arising from these unsafe abortions, not just unsafe abortions, in general, you will find that in Zambia right now, about 293 women are dying every year okay, during childbirth. Are we saying that we're not tackling the issues of childbirth? No. What has Zago done? Zago is sponsoring research to try and uh, find ways in which this number of uh, women who are dying can be reduced. Number two, what is Zago doing? Zago is going out into different parts of the country to identify people or rather to identify other medical doctors or other uh, people who are involved in the practice of medicine to help to educate them so that these numbers of mortalities are reduced. And this is also an organization that is highly vested in research. Mm -hmm. You understand? So yes, we are not just here to focus on abortions. Our topic today is abortions. It's one of the many it's topics. It's one of the many topics that we are, um, that, that we are interested in. If, if I were to break down what the interest of Zago would be, I would say the interest of Zago is reduction in maternal mortality. That's all. We want to see a country where the numbers of women dying during childbirth uh, from complications of pregnancy are reduced to zero. Then we would be happy. Okay, Doc. Now, let me bring you in, Council. Let's talk about when abortion is deemed unlawful <coughs> and um, how you deal with such cases. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Vinzu. Uh, according to the law, uh, those are the Acts of Parliament that I cited, they've, they've set out conditions under which abortion will be deemed uh, legal and safe. The first part is that uh, through the Health Professions Act, it spells out who in Zambia can carry out illegal abortion. And that is um, persons who are qualified and registered as uh, medical practitioners, doctors for for, for lack of, uh, is it for simplification purposes? Only doctors would carry out a termination of a pregnancy. And of course, doctors are assisted by mid-level providers in their hospitals. The second condition that you need to take account of is that for all abortions in Zambia, they ought to be carried out in a place registered and meeting the conditions of a hospital. And such a place should be registered by the Health Professions Council of Zambia and it has passed the test of being certified as a hospital. So what is a hospital according to the law? A hospital is any place that provides inpatient as well as outpatient uh, healthcare services and provides the following services. One, gynecology mm -hmm. or pediatrics or medicine or surgery or any of these uh, services such a hospital would pass or such a place would pass to be a hospital. And the other rider to that is that it should be under the direct supervision or control of a person who qualifies to be a medical practitioner. So it's, it's not any, any person. So for, for, for a person like myself, I don't know if um, you, 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 are, you are a medical doctor besides the job, but if you are not, people like you and me have no business to do with abortion. And that would extend to also our grandmothers in the townships to, in the compounds, as it were, or in the villages. Mm -hmm. That is one condition. Then the second one is that if a place is not registered as a hospital, it should not carry out this uh, health service. So no matter how grand and nice uh, your studios are, if ZNBC mass media is not registered as a hospital, you cannot carry out an abortion. That, that, that is uh, one of the conditions. Uh, 
by and large, basically, that if you stay out of these uh, conditions as set out by the law, then there is a very big chance that that abortion is unsafe and illegal. Okay, obviously from the previous calls, we have heard the concerns on the ground. But in as much as these concerns are there, do we see people reporting unsafe abortion cases? Do they rush to the legal authorities? Do they go to the police to say, this person conducted an abortion um, case outside the hospital, not, by, not done by the doctor? Is the community responding positively in the fight against unsafe abortions? Thanks, thank you, Wenzel. And like I said earlier, abortion is a very emotive issue and very divisive in its own nature because of our many beliefs. And for me, I'll speak as a lawyer, and I get a lot of guidance and comfort from an old American case, uh, Roe versus Wade. It was decided, I think, uh, in 1973. And there was a very important uh, statement, or part of the judgment, rather, that uh, the judges say there. And maybe before I say that statement, I I'll try to maybe refer to what was discussed by uh, uh, Pastor Joshua from Mumbwa, if I get that right, and uh, the others. I do understand their concerns, and especially for these men of uh, gold, uh, they are our religious guiders, we need to pay heed to what they say. But also, we need to look at uh, the bigger picture. Like Doc was saying, I stand to be corrected by my statistics. Zambia's uh, current maternal mortality rate stands at uh, 271 mm -hmm. per 100,000 uh, beds, uh, deaths. And I'm told that 30% of those are relating to unsafe and illegal abortion. So that is to say that out of 200 and, uh, or should I say every year, Zambia loses, that is for the reported cases, as she said. And I'd want to think the reported cases are a small segment a small of the point. actual case on the ground, because our research is quite narrow and uh, very much in its infancy. But out of 271 women who die every year trying to give life, 83 of them are through unsafe and illegal abortion. So in this age of technological advancement of all the informations, you have the gadgets, you can talk to somebody in Japan, in the US, just using your, your small gadget you call a phone. We have in our midst people who are not making use of these people who've been trained to deal with such matters. Mm -hmm. And 83 women die because they go to people who are not trained, because they go to environments that the law does not recognize. That is to say, in simple terms, you go to intercity bus, you load what you call Marco Polo buses, which takes about 73 women. So you, you load 72 or thereabout. Mm -hmm. You load women full of buses, 72 of them. Then six of them, 72, about nine of them, you leave them to, to board the next one. Then you go and throw that bus in the Zambezi. That is the sad reality of it. So I do understand the religious uh, arguments around it, and I do appreciate it. But also within the frame of human rights, religion is a very difficult uh, issue. Why? Because it's the highly personal. I, the doc, uh, sorry, the pastor did mention uh, Exodus, and thanks for that uh, citation. He does know his Bible well. But within the Bible, the, you have also another verse, is it Jeremiah 3, 5, which talks about, uh, which tries to answer the question of uh, when does life begin? And uh, Jeremiah says that life begins long before you were formed in your mother's uh, womb. So you'd want to think, literally speaking, that life begins long before conception. That is from the Christian faith. And uh, uh, I don't know what the pastors out there think. From the Muslim uh, faith, I'm not too sure, but I've heard positions to the effect that life begins 12 weeks after conception. From just your, your, your thought, traditional. Just hold your thought, uh, Council. We might lose Titus. Let's quickly uh, accommodate him. Hello. You're through to Inside Health. Uh, yes, uh, this is Titus Tobolo calling from Kaoma, Western Province. Yes, Titus, please go ahead with your question or contribution. Uh, I'm seeing Zago doing a good job. But my concern is that the fellow country women and fellow country men, uh, they are failing to understand. What really Zago is advocating for? You know, if we, I, I understand that we are living in the Christian community, and uh, within the Christian communities where we are based, there are errors and mistakes people are making prior to their well-being of life. 
going direct on the point, something to do with abortion and pregnancies and plans, those issues are arising in these communities. Now, what Izago is doing is not encouraging young women or women to abort now. That's not their mission. Their mission is to control and reduce. Because the issue here is this. There's this an individual who is in this community who wants to, to, to you know, to terminate the pregnancy through methods that are not allowed by the Ministry of Health or by health personnel. But this person wants, and it is his, it is her I, I, idea or maybe her wish to say, let me terminate the pregnancy, let me abort. Now, what does Zago comes in? Zago comes in to say, this particular individual who is willing and wants to abort, how do we help them to do it in the right way? No one that has been pushed away in the human rights. So the issue is, these individuals, even when we advocate through, you know, religion, religion Christianity and alike, these errors still arise. People will not be able to adhere. They will still do. Why? This is the reason why we're even sitting in the churches. People are seated in the church, but their mind is not on the Bible. Their mind is outside the church to plan to go and commit, you know, sin. <laughs> so how do we help these individuals to do it right? Zago comes in to reduce, to maintain, you know, advocating for things to be done in a right way so that we don't lose life. So people need to understand, to understand what Zago is advocating for. Not that they're encouraging, no. I know I'm a teacher, a profession, I don't understand a lot, but he, I want to pick it in that way. That is, Zago is regulating so that this thing that this individual wants to do is done in the right way. I feel it's done like that. Anyway, I'm yet to be controlled by you then. All right. Thank you so much, yes, Titus. So, um, Council, i allow you to continue with your thought, then uh, maybe Doc can come in. No, uh, thank you a lot, uh, uh, Venzu. And I don't think I would have put it any better than Titus did, and thanks to him. Uh, just to, to, to state, I think, uh, the religious argument. Within the African uh, religious uh, setup, you would call the Chimuntu religion. It is very unclear when life begins. So much so that if a child is unfortunate as to lose his or her life, mm -hmm. maybe within the first two months of his life, you know, our tradition would even demand that. Uh, the father to the child might not even be part of the burial ceremony. Not, neither will the mother be. And uh, the elders, especially the women, are the ones who go and dispose of the remains of uh, the departed uh, child. The take message from that, from the African Zeta, is that uh, there's no life to mourn about. So you can argue safely to say that within the African Zeta, life begins long after birth. Twisted to the legal point, especially the American case of Royal, this is a word is that the court did guide that uh, insofar as the law is concerned, for issues that science, theology, uh, religion, philosophy are not settled, it is always safer for the law to take a neutral position. So the law has taken a neutral position that life begins long after birth. Sorry, life begins at birth. That's why when you look at uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is the basic charter for you to be a member of the international family under the U United Nations, and Zambia ratified this one before this entity you call Zambia came into being so that we can be part of uh, what? The Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Article 1 does provide uh, for that, that life begins after birth. Mm -hmm. So we can always argue from a religious point, which is uh, very much appreciated, but we should also try to push the human rights uh, argument, which is that... Uh, women, just like men, have rights. And we should not look at women as only being here on earth to give birth. There's more to a woman's life. And probably that is also a very good starting point for our viewers, notwithstanding their religious arguments. OK, uh, Doc, let's uh, look at what exactly happens um, when one is receiving unsafe abo I mean, safe abortion services in a health facilities. And is it all the health facilities that offer these services? Um, thank you so much, Benzu. So when, yeah, m actually most of the facilities uh, which are under the guidance of a trained personnel are offering the service, okay? 
So um, if you go to a, a facility that is not able to offer you the service, then you'll be referred to a facility that has one. So in terms of, um, of providers of this service, it's not just limited to the obstetricians and gynecologists, no. Um, that is why we're working with different stakeholders. I think amongst the other people that I mentioned we work with are the, um, the midwives, okay? So the midwives that have been trained to carry out uh, comprehensive abortion uh, services, there are uh, clinical officers that have been trained. Um, there are other medical uh, personnel that have been trained to carry out the service. So um, what happens when one wants uh, this service? Basically, someone will not just walk in and say, hey, Dr. Chira, I want an abortion. And then Dr. Chira will be like, come, let's go and I, I give you the service. No, that's not how it works, OK? So what happens is that this woman has to undergo, either the woman or the girl has to undergo extensive counseling. And they have to fall within the four categories that council has mentioned um, as provided by the law. and. Um, what we do is that, yes, one, like say for example they come and approach me, I will agree to, to that service, but it will not just end at me. I have to go and see two other doctors who have to sign to consent, one of whom has to be a consultant, my consultant, who will be a consultant uh, obstetrician and gynecologist. As long as there's conflict amongst these three, that service will not be offered there and then. So mm -hmm. we'll tell the woman to come back and maybe give us more information. Yes, so that's basically what we do. And we advocate for these women also not to abort, but to find other alternatives, such as taking the kids to their orphans. We, we had a case in Chipata last year where a, a girl was about 20 years old, I think 18 <coughs> years old. She, uh, she got pregnant, and then she was being looked after by an elderly grandmother. And she, of course, went to the hospital to have uh, an abortion service. This girl was cancelled, and eventually we discovered that this is a girl who would have loved to mm -hmm. keep the baby and uh, um, have the baby put up for adoption. So she okay. carried her pregnancy to term, and the baby was adopted. Okay, Doc, thank you so much. Time is not with us. <laughs> it's not on our side. Thank you so much for coming through to this uh, very important uh, program aimed at promoting uh, women's uh, sexual uh, reproductive health and rights. We'll be back next week, same time, for another insightful program. From me, Wenzum Leamola, goodbye for now.